Yeah, I think our conversation about the importance of divergent thinking brings up um, something really important in the way that I sort of evaluate art and have also observed in the way people talk about people in the past or just people in the present. Um, when I think about artists, every artist that I've met or have watched interviews of, they seem like the most open and compassionate to the mistakes of others. Mm-hmm. They're like the, they seem to be the first people who recognize that we're all human, we're all imperfect, and we all make mistakes. And that's something that I really admire about artists on top of like their courage to participate in divergent thinking and sort of like explore um, what most are not courageous enough to explore. And well, and just let me add too, yeah. like, I think it's courageous to follow your art. Mm-hmm. You don't know where it's going to lead you and you don't know what's going to happen with it. And like, you know, I, I love the band X. And one of the things I always, I always think about when I'm listening to him, I was like, they've been following their music for, you know, 40 years now or something. And, and they just kept following it through Mm -hmm. like good times and bad. Like that alone is like really, that alone is really courageous to even just follow, to follow what you need to do next. Um, I'm sure there were a lot of, you know, missed family holidays and things like that, that they had to, you know, cause they were doing a concert or something like mm. all of those little day-to-day decisions. Um, to me, that's about like, you know, choosing, choosing the freedom to make your work in those moments. That that's a lot of bravery. Too. Yeah. And I think a lot of the value that art, whether it be paintings, music, books, letters, people write is I think it sort of opens up a portal for me to learn more about the lived experience of others whom, mm-hmm. you know, we can contrast very distinctly with, you know, our lived experience now. And one thing that I've observed and is I found pretty disheartening in my generation, but I'm sure it's been around since, you know, the beginning of time is I think people, when they look back at history, they approach it with this sort of like moral superiority of mm-hmm. like, oh, like I would have never yeah. had this like <laughs> racist belief or I would have never uh, been a part of this government or I would have never... Um, you know, thought this about this person or done this or participated in this exploration or colonization. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the really cool things about art, you know, when you watch a painting made in the 1500s, it's like, we don't know what it's like to live in that time, you know? And I'm very skeptical of how much morality we sort of like attribute to ourselves. And I do think a lot of times it's really cheap morality because I don't think we really find out if we're if um, the morals we have are really our morals until they're tested. And there's so much sort of morals that we assume are ours and we've never had to like test them or stand up for them or pay a price for them or sacrifice something for them. Mm -hmm. And you know, when I see a painting, I think it was the 3rd of May by Goya. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was like a rebellion writer in in Spain. When I see something like that, it's like, wow, like that's like the human experience, right? Like this is something that happened over and over again, just like violence. Right. And it'd be very easy for me now, you know, growing up in East Bay and sure, you know, I'm not like affluent background, but pretty comfortable. I have heating, mm-hmm. I had food, I, you know, I went to school, I got an education. It it'd be, seems very easy for me to sort of like look at that and be like, oh, I'd never participate in violence like that. Mm-hmm. But I think art serves as like a great reminder for me of um, my humanity and my imperfection. Mm. Um, when you evaluate art, is that something you sort of take into consideration? Maybe something that you've, um, some value that you've derived in your time mm, managing About art? subject matter or about... Yeah, maybe about the lessons art has taught you about your own humanity mm-hmm. and the human experience and human nature. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about, um, you know, my first degree was in um, German literature and um, I studied in Germany a couple times and I um I still have a lot of connections there and things and you know obviously Germans everybody you know the first thing everybody thinks about is Nazis and um and and I think that's a very good example of of our moral superiority about how I would never do that um and I think like you know, if you look at like the like the drawings of Kathy Colwitz or something like that, and you look at what it means to be a mother who is watching her child starve, mm-hmm. um, I don't. I like to think I would do the right thing. I, but I also know that if you if I was put in a situation where it was, you know, God forbid, feeding my child or turning in my neighbor, mm-hmm. I want to believe I do the right thing. I really do. Mm-hmm. I don't know though and I also think that there's a really good um, 
yeah, and you look at yeah, just looking at those drawings and thinking about that. But I, but I think there's also I, I read a really great book recently where, um, where a mother asked her daughter, a little kid, uh, do you think we would do the right thing in this situation? And I don't remember which atrocity of man's inhumanity to man that they were talking about, but she said she said no, we wouldn't. And she says, why don't you think we do the right thing? And she said, because we're not doing the right thing right now. Mm -hmm. There are atrocities right now going on all the time. And, um, and I often think about like, you know, what am I doing? What am I doing about any of it? And I, and I often feel like I, um, you know, I, yeah, that I would, you know, I'd like to think that I'm doing the right thing, but you know, and sometimes I'll think like, what if, like, what would it take, you know, to it for everybody to have a warm place to sleep? Like, what if I found out that if I just, if we all just gave up one couch in our house, every single person would have a warm place to live? Like, would I do that? Would I, be, would I give up the couch in my living room? I don't know. I like to think I would, but I don't know. I don't, you know, it's just, mm -hmm. it's so easy. It's so easy to judge and so hard to do the right thing. And there is all kinds of um, inhumanities going on right now. And, and here I am sitting in my fancy museum in the quiet out of yeah. the rain gonna go home to my house and sleep in a warm bed and probably eat a dinner you mm -hmm. know yeah so. mm -hmm.